Hi there trailer owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dexter's heavy duty suspension kit for tandem axle trailers. This equalizer kit is going to be a direct replacement for your factory parts, but it does come included with upgraded heavy duty hardware. You can see our bolts are wet bolts, so you'll get the grease circs in the ends, which allows you to lubricate the hardware so it lasts a lot longer. And our shackles here that it comes with are significantly thicker on this kit than your standard ones. That's just also going to help increase the life of those components. More metal, more material means more strength. Now there are three different kits available and you want to make sure that you use your equalizer to help determine which kit is appropriate for you. Two of the kits are going to look very similar with equalizers of this shape. To determine which one is the appropriate for your trailer, you'll want to measure center to center between the two bolt holes located here. You can do it with it all assembled like this and just measure from the center of the two bolts. One kit will be a five and three quarter inch kit, which is the one that we're showing off here today. That's for trailers with a 33 inch axle spacing. And there's also one again, it looks just like this, but it's gonna measure seven and three quarter inches and that's for a 35 inch axle spacing. There's also one more available and it does have a little bit different shape it, that is for ones with four inch high hangers. Your trailer suspension is one of the most important parts. It's what's supporting all the weight of your trailer on the axles. And these components here is what keeps your axles and everything attached and also what dampens all the forces from the road. As the bushings tend to wear out inside your equalizers and components, you now have play in inside those components and that's going to cause a loud banging. You likely won't hear it because your trailer is being pulled behind you, but if it was in a car and you had many cars have similar leaf spring components, you hear those often in a car. So having grease bolts like this, it incentivizes you to check your trailer because you have to get down here and grease them, which gives you a good chance to do a good visual inspection. Because with the maintenance free kinds, those often wear out and people don't even realize how worn they are until they finally take their trailer in for service. And there's a lot of damage that's already done that can sometimes cause more expensive repairs. Like if the leaf spring here, if the eye gets all worn out in the middle, you'll have to replace the whole leaf due to the damage caused by this hardware. So getting a wet bolt kit like this will give you a much heavier duty hardware that's gonna help prevent it from occurring in that condition and give you a way to maintain it, which greatly extends the life of it. This is a really a good kit. If you're someone that likes to take care of their stuff, you get to put a kit like this in there and as long as you're greasing it, it'll probably last you the rest of your life. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the new one versus the old one here so you can see them side by side. Now these two equalizers, they are gonna be basically, they're identical to one another. You're not gonna get any performance benefits as far as the way your suspension performs with something like this, but this is a direct replacement component. What's nice about that, it means it's gonna be easier to replace than a lot of other aftermarket components. They're gonna have you install a lot more parts to make their aftermarket parts work. So it's gonna be a quick and easy installation and it does come with some heavy duty upgrades that don't, again, they don't affect the way your trailer is pulled behind you. It's gonna feel the same, but they're gonna last a little longer. If we look at the old one here, it's got the plastic style bushings in it there. And this is a maintenance free option, but these bushings, they wear out just like everything else. This one here is, a, is our replacement. This one is a maintenance equalizer. So you do have to get in there and grease it. So this one is a little bit more work than your older style here, but the benefit of being able to grease it means your components are going to last significantly longer than what what these ones do. You saw already that the plastic's kind of already pretty beat up on the inside of there and again when that wears out it allows play to occur between the bolts and the component, the equalizer, and that just causes the bolt to slam up and down. It causes it to wear out even more and more and more. The play gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually at some point this will actually crack and break the metal. Something like this here, as long as you keep it well greased, it will last seemingly forever. As long as you keep greasing here, these bushings last a very long time because there's no metal on metal contact and it just prevents wear from ever really occurring to allow play in the system. I also like them because in my opinion, they come apart a little bit easier if you do have to do any work on them. If you keep everything well greased, things slide apart fairly easily. It is a little bit more of a mess. And again, it is a little bit of maintenance, but if you're somebody that likes to take care of their trailer, then this is one part that you would appreciate over the factory one here, as it's something that you're gonna put on and probably never have to mess with again, besides greasing it. Now that we've gone over some of the features, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation by removing the wheels off of our trailer. To do that, you'll wanna make sure you jack the trailer up and support it by jack stands all the way around on all four corners underneath the frame. Then we can remove the wheels from each side. Once you've got your wheels off, we then need to prepare our axles to where we can get our equalizer hardware off. 
So I've got these prepared right here. All I did was just take jack stands and place them underneath. There's no weight on them just yet. They're just there for later steps because when we take these loose, the axles are gonna to wanna to drop down. We've also got a jack underneath here. It's just kissed right up to the bottom of it. There's no pressure on it just yet, but we're gonna be using that to help us raise this up and down so we can get our new hardware to line up. So it's good to just have everything already together. And you also wanna make sure that these stands are here too, because as we take things loose, that's gonna, we're gonna be supporting our axles on those. So now that we've got everything in place, we can go and remove the hardware. The nuts are on the inside here. So we're gonna remove those using an 18 millimeter socket. We're gonna take out the shackles on each side as well as the center equalizer bolt. And then at the end of our leaf spring down here, there's also another one here. We'll take that one out as well, way down here. If your hardware is damaged, you may need to put a wrench on the nut. They are splined, so they shouldn't spin in there, but again, they may the splines may have worn off, so it's possible you could need a wrench there if there is damage to those components. Now that we've got the, all the nuts loose, you can go ahead and take the shackles off the opposite side there on the inside. They should just slide off of there. If they're really tight, that's where you would wanna use the jack that we've got in place. You can put a little bit of pressure on it or relieve a little bit of pressure to help your assembly move them down. And that usually frees things up so they come off. So now that we've got those off, our whole shackles will slide out together with the two bolts in it. If you jack up on one end, you can kinda, kinda find a sweet spot on where the tension is on your axle. And it looks like we're actually gonna to to move our jack to the back axle because it looks like this is the one that's causing a bind on our system. So we're gonna move the jack back here and we're gonna try this one. Now, if it's still in a bind, I'll show you another trick that we can do to help make things a little bit easier. So yeah, we still are in kind of a bind here. So the easy trick to do with this is while we've got the jack under it, go ahead and lift up on your jack stand and then lower your axle down so that way the weight is actually on the jack stand. We'll then move our jack to the other axle and we'll kind of do the same thing, but by putting the weight on the jack stands, it, it can help get you into a position where you're not in a bind anymore. Now, if you are in a position where it's just in a bind and no matter how you move your axles, you just can't seem to slide these guys out. It could also be that they're stuck inside the bushing here, which could be caused by rust, corrosion, and other things. And it may not be a bind that's causing your issue. So if it comes down to it, you can just drive these guys out of here. I do like to put a nut on the bolt just a couple of turns before I hit it, just in case I wanna reuse this hardware. That'll protect the threads on the end of the bolt while you're trying to drive it out. And you can see it comes out there fairly easy, so it was likely just stuck in the bushing. Uh, I don't think we were in too much of a bind there because it was kind of a little love tap that we gave it. And now that we've got the one out, the other one typically just comes right out of there. So it was a little bit of a bind. We just couldn't hit that sweet spot, but that's okay. We pulled them out of there now. And we can now go ahead and drive out the bushings here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this equalizer. So similar story to driving these guys out. I went ahead and threaded a nut on there to protect the threads. Get it to pop just a little bit and you can thread the nut off a little. Tap it a little more. And then we can remove our parts here. And you can see here is our factory equalizer and what it looks like here. So to remove the old bushings, the easiest way I found to do it, and also since you got the bolt right on hand, this is the one that we just drove out right here from the center. The shoulder of that bolt right there is a pretty nice little lip. And that lip will drive these old bushings out pretty easily. And you can see here's our old bushings. Now the old ones here, these are a self-lubricating kind of a plastic type composite bushing. Uh, these ones here, you can see they do, they do wear out. They kind of get thinner and stuff over time. They, they're not nearly as durable as a bronze bushing, but the nice part about these is since they are self-lubricating, they are a maintenance-free option. So you never have to get in here and mess with these. The, the only issue is again, they're not the most reliable. They're more reliable than ones 
that are we're, that we're about to put in if you never maintenance them but if you maintenance them they're going to last significantly longer than what these ones do so now we can put in our new bushings these are the bronze bushings that come in our kit they are going to be a press fit right in there if you drive out your old bushings and you go to put these in and this just falls right in here and slides right out the other side you have damage to your leaf spring here the eyelet has been wallowed out and that was caused by your old bushing that was no longer performing its job allowed play to get in there and once that plays in there your trailer is bouncing up and down the road and it's just slamming metal on metal in here and that will elongate the hole and make it to where the spring itself is actually damaged our bushing is nice and snug and that's what we want to see we don't want to just push it in there because if we push it in there and it falls out the other side you're gonna it's just gonna wear it out you're gonna have too much play in there it'll wear your bushing out real fast so if you if this does just fall out you need to replace the leaf spring To drive it in, I like to use a bolt. We're using one with a shoulder on it here so that way it's smooth on the inside. I'll line it up just like that and this will give me a nice striking position. Once you get it started there, I grab the bolt on the other side. I like to have one long enough to where I can hold it. That just keeps it because when you hit it without it, you'll see the bolt wants to shoot back out so we can hold it. We'll now repeat that same procedure over here on this side. Once you've got those done, then we can knock out the bolts here on the opposite side, and then we can lower the axle down and also do those. So we've got the leaf spring eye here towards the front of our trailer now. Sometimes when you have this loose, where your leaf spring is loose on both ends like this, when you go to try to drive in a bushing, there's just a lot of play in your components and it, and it kind of likes to spring back on you and the bushing doesn't like to drive in. So one of the things that I've kind of mocked up here that works pretty well is if you take a bolt, put a washer on it, and then just a washer and a nut and make sure that bolt's long enough to go all the way through, you can use that nut, bolt, and washer to draw the, to kind of squeeze that bushing in there. So we'll show you that here just so you can see that method because sometimes it is necessary Regardless of which one, I do like to start with the drive method because it just holds that, kind of helps hold that bushing in place while you're getting the tool set up. So we're just going to give it a couple of taps there just to get it to where it'll hold. And we'll take our tool here, we'll slide it through, slide it through the other side, and then we'll just use a electric tool to run that down it'll draw it in and we just want to draw it in until it's flush so that's good right there and we'll just back our tool off now that we've got the bushing drove in on the end of the leaf spring here I've gone ahead and used my jack to raise it back up and we'll line our holes up and this is the new bolts that come in our kit they have a grease fitting on them. Now you can put the grease fitting on either side, whether it be the outside or the inside. It really just depends on preference. With this particular trailer, before I lifted it up, one of the things I checked was to see if I could see the head of the bolt on each attachment point. And if you can see the head of the bolt while the trailer's on the ground, there's a good chance you're gonna be able to grease the fitting with the bolts facing out. If the tires are in the way though and you can't see the heads of those bolts, then you might want to put them in this way with the grease fittings facing towards the inside so that way you can crawl underneath and easily grease these. Because so by putting them on the outside, it may force you to have to remove the wheel depending on your particular trailer. But we're going to put them on the outside because on this trailer, again, they're easily visible from the outside. So once we get it started, they are new. Everything there is new, so it is going to be just a little bit snug. We're just tapping it in. We're not even hitting it hard. You're just kind of gliding it on in there. You want to make sure you don't hit the grease fitting in the middle, so put something over it. I'm using a socket. Well then, wanna, after you've driven it in so far, you'll want to lower it down. Check on the inside and make sure that the holes do line up, because it's often that, since your axes are kind of cocked here, since we had just raised one up and down, that this bolt's going to be up a little bit. So you do have to get that down to where it lines up with the hole on the other side, and then just continue driving it in. Once you've got it up to where it's just about all the way in, the splines on the head of the bolt there, they're going to make it real difficult to get it to go in the rest of the way. We do need it to be fully seated up against there, 
But what I found is best to do this is uh, to put your nut on it, we're gonna drive it in, then we'll drive it and then tighten. I like to save that for a later step back when I'm going to tighten down all my hardware. We'll double check to make sure that all these are flush. So if we look here, we've got everything, all of our bushings replaced now. We're ready to put on the new equalizer. You wanna just check the holes here where the bolts slide through to make sure that there's no issues there. They're not elongated or worn out. This is a pretty good fit in there because if your bushings wear out, that play can start to transfer to other components here on your suspension and it may damage those as well. Everything's okay here. You can see this is welded on. You would need to get it welded, re-welded a new one on if this was all worn out up in here, that this hole was elongated up like this or something like that. So since everything's okay, we can go ahead and go back together. We're gonna start by taking our equalizer here. I like to have the Dexter logo facing out, um, which could flip it around and have the grease circ facing forward if you wanted to. We're gonna raise it up in between the hanger. And then this is the one bolt in the kit that doesn't have a grease zerk on it. And the reason it doesn't is because the zerk's actually in the uh, hanger right here. I mean, in the equalizer. So then we'll just slide this on through, start a nut on the other side. I like to leave it loose for now until we get everything kind of all mocked up. Next, we're gonna take our pre-assembled shackles here and we're gonna put those into place. So if we look here, these are too close together, it's not gonna fit. But what we can do is we can use our jack here to raise up on the axle. And it'll raise up just to the point to where it slides together like that. Then on the back side, we'll place our other shackle. That'll slide into place. And then we're gonna follow that up with a couple of nuts. We'll do the same thing over on the other side of our equalizer with the other shackle. So now that our hardware is all loosely installed, we can go back and tighten it down. With the shackles here, these are already pre-seated, but remember that these ones here we still need to seat. So with the ones we still need to seat, I like to just run those until there's a little bit of tension on them and then I'll show you a trick to help drive that in so that way we don't damage our hangers or anything. So we're just gonna run them all down first. So now we've got tension on it with the nut on there. It makes it a lot easier to drive this in. And it looks like we still got just a little bit of gap, so I'll, all I'm gonna do is alternate between tightening this a little bit and then coming back over here and hitting it until it's completely flush. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. More often than not, you don't need a wrench when installing the new hardware. The splines will hold the bolts in place. Now we've got them all installed, we just need to go back and grease them. You wanna make sure you're using a lithium complex grease, NLGI number two. We're using Lubramatics disc wheel bearing grease. It does have those proper ratings. It's for disc brakes, drum brakes, and chassis parts. And you can pick that up here at e-trailer. And you can also get a grease gun here at e-trailer as well. When you're greasing them here, you do wanna to try to be on nice and straight. You can see it's kind of squirting out around the outside there. You can see here, if we look at the shack on the inside though, grease is coming through. We can see it piling up there. So we know grease is getting through our bushing in there and lubricating it. So we'll just move on and grease all of these. You can take a rag and wipe up any mess so that way you don't leave anything behind on your driveway. You'll also wanna make sure you lubricate the hanger at the top. And we can see that grease coming out the side of the hanger there from where we shot it in. We can now remove our jack stands head over to the other side and perform the same procedures over there to get those replaced. Now that we've got the other side complete, we can just put our tires back on. Make sure you torque those down to your trailer specifications and you're all set. And that completes our look at Dexter's heavy duty suspension kit for tandem axle trailers.